Uh, once again, my name is Carrie Gale, and I'm going to be hosting the training this afternoon on the corporate membership module in Tendency. Um, Michelle and Charlene, are you guys currently using the corporate membership module on your site? Uh, somewhat. Uh, you know, I have people that join and become member of the foundation. Okay. So, yes. Okay. Um, we do have a separate training that is on the memberships module. We will touch a little bit on the memberships module today, but this specific training is focused on the corporate membership module. But stop me at any time if you guys do have any questions. Uh, we are going to talk about the difference between site users and members, the difference between members and corporate members, um, how to get started with corporate memberships, and how to handle imports, renewals, reports, um, and other items for the corporate membership module. So first let's brush up a little on our tendency training. We're going to take a look at the corporate membership module and I'm going to be flipping back and forth between the PowerPoint and our little training site that we have, one of the training sites that we use to demonstrate certain uh, procedures. So the corporate membership module is a module within tendency that allows companies or organizations to join and for individuals or members under that company to join underneath the company. So um, you can have users manage their corporate membership by applying for the membership and paying online. You can designate representatives for dues reps, member reps, and alternate reps. You can also allow individuals to join under the company or organization and you can also verify that they are part of that company or organization as part of the join process. Um, the individuals are able to join, renew, and manage their profile online. You can specify spec uh, pricing guidelines for the company as well as the individuals and all of the members will be able to enjoy membership privileges as defined by the admin on the site and as far as tendency uh, views members. Um, we do have um, links to specific help files throughout the PowerPoint and at the end of the training I'll be emailing you out the PowerPoint so you guys can uh, review and click on the links to, to view the help files online as well for extra information. And we just talked about the, the various uh, features that individuals will have using the corporate membership module. The membership module manages the membership status of individual members um, on your website. You can have pricing for different membership types. Um, for example, a uh, regular member, uh, a general member versus a student member, or uh, an honorary member, or things like that. Uh, you can join as an individual member that is not associated with a corporation as well. You can have online and offline payment for membership dues. You, there's an online membership application that members can use to join. And they can also renew their memberships online. Uh, <clears throat> and members in tendency are designated by an entry called the member ID field in their user record. And this is what tendency will look for to verify their membership and allow for them to have member benefits. So the next level of folks in tendency are users and the users module uh, manages all of your site contacts including members, regular users, administrators, everybody's going to be in the user module. Um, you'll notice in the picture that the member record has a, a little yellow highlight there. It has a member ID um, and the user record below it doesn't have a member ID, it doesn't have a special highlight, it doesn't have the little man in the door icon, and the one above it is an administrator record, so it's uh, denoted as an admin. You'll also notice that each of these three records have a blue box around them, and that just simply means that um, you are the owner of that record. So, for example, this, was, this image was taken from one of our uh, test sites or training sites and I was logged in as me and so the administrator record um, it has a blue block box around it because I added that record the other two records were also added by me so I'm designated as the owner 
you may notice that there are some records in your user module that may have the blue box around them and some that don't. That just simply means that the, for the guys that don't, they weren't added or created by you. So that's the only um, distinction with the records that have the blue box around them and not. Any questions so far? Alrighty. So let's take a look uh, at the difference between site users and site members. Essentially, any, any person that makes contact with you through the website is considered a site user. Folks can make contact via submitting a contact form. They can register as a site user. They can apply for membership. They can just be site visitors and not ever even register or submit a contact form at all. Um, members are considered a subset of site users. They are also considered site users with benefits. So members can members have a member number. They can have special benefits like member only pricing for calendar events. They can have uh, access to specific member only content on the site. You can uh, you can also charge for members. Site users are free. Um, Members, you can also have free members, but folks do normally charge for members. And um, members expire after a year. Site users don't. Those are a few of the, the, the basic level differences. We do have a link to a help file that explains a little bit more. Um, what's the difference between corporate members and members? Let's take a look. Corporate members. Um, when we're dealing with corporate membership module versus the membership module, if your organization has individuals as members, they're going to be managed by the memberships module. If you have companies for members, then these folks, the companies are going to be in the corporate membership module. So corporate members are not one person but actually a company. Underneath the corporate memberships, you can have individuals associated with that company listed. Those individuals can be users, meaning they don't necessarily need to be members as far as tendency defines them uh, for the company, or they can be members of your organization, meaning they pay a fee or they are they don't have a fee because they're part of that organization. Um, in, in most instances, members, individual members and corporate members, individuals and companies will pay a fee to join. Um, some of our clients do set it up where the company pays a fee, but the individuals under the company don't necessarily pay a fee, and you can set it up however you need to, and we'll get into that in more detail a little later on in the training. Questions so far? Okay. So, uh, to become a site user, you have to register with the website. And let's take a look at our, our little training site over here, just a second. Bring that into focus. So this is one of the training sites that we use. Um, to become a site user, folks can go here and join using the site registration. Once they complete this form, they'll be added as a user. To become a member, they'll need to complete um, the membership application, um, which we'll take a look at how to do as well a little later on in the training. And then to become a corporate member, the company needs to join. Um, a representative, an actual person from the company, has to complete the membership application for the company. And then once the company has joined, individuals under that company will be able to join underneath the corporation. And they will use the same application as individual members, um, but there will be just a couple different extra fields on there to associate them with the co corporation. Whereas if they're joining as an individual that isn't associated with the corporation, those fields won't appear. We do have a link to SuperDuper Help File that um, explains this in a little bit more detail. As far as tenancy is concerned, uh, in order to know whether a user or a person in the database is a user versus a member, it looks for the member ID field. Um, in the database. Let me see if I can get my go to meeting. Oh, it's so exciting. The little member ID field right there. 
um, in the user table. And once again, members expire, but users do not. And if it if you're an active member, you will have a member ID in your user record, and as long as that's there, you'll be eligible for member benefits. All right. So that's a little bit of background on the difference between the memberships module, the corporate memberships module, and the difference between site users, members, corporate members. And so we're going to take a, a deeper look into how you can get started using corporate memberships. Um, and it's a 12-step process. <laughs> we're going to go over, we're going to review the 12 steps, and then we're going to go through each step in a little bit more detail and be sure to stop me along the way if you guys have any questions at all. So the first thing that you need to do in order to get started using corporate memberships is to create the individual membership application. Once you've created the individual membership application then you can go ahead and create the corporate membership application. Right now for tenancy uh, the you will have you, you only have the capability to have one corporate membership application active at a time and one individual membership application active at a time so even if you have individuals that aren't part of a corporation joining they will have to share the same application as the individuals who are part of a corporation that are needing to join you'll have to m make some updates to specific site settings in order to turn on the corporate membership module for your site um, and we'll go into detail as well how to do that so you want to update the site setting for corporate memberships available to yes update the site setting for default user type to be custom update site setting for the user self ad format to be corporate membership membership and then once you've updated those settings the next step is to create the individual membership types that will eventually be associated with the corporate memberships. Now the membership types are where you specify pricing. So for example, if you had a general member and the, the membership fee was $50, um, student member, maybe the membership fee is $25. If you're creating um, individual membership types that are to be associated with the corporate member, this is where you would determine whether or not the individuals would need to pay an extra fee or if they have free membership just because their company has joined. You can specify that there. Then you want to create the corporate membership types which is where you specify the price for the companies to join and lots of folks do it differently. Some folks do it based on the size of the company. If your company is um, X size, the fee is $1,000. If your company is Y size, the fee is $5,000 and so on and so forth. So once you've got the applications done, you've got the membership types on there, you have your settings turned on, the next thing is to get the members into the site. Um, if you already have existing members, you can format the individual members to import them and then go ahead and import them. If you have uh, a group of companies that you want to have added, you'll have to prepare that and you can send it over to us to add to the database because currently there isn't a way for an admin to import the companies but we can do that um, the Shipple programming team will have to do that for you and there will be an extra fee involved um, and then the final the next step is to bind the individual members to their corporate member entity and what that means is we want to make sure that the individual members that were previously imported are correctly associated with the companies that were added so that um, they have the right membership type and, and the, all the links are there. And that's, that's another function that we have to take care of right now because we don't have that capability in the front end yet. Um, so you'll have to get in touch with either your project manager or if you are already live, contact somebody in the support team and we can, and we can take care of that for you. So now that you have everybody in the system, um, you're ready to go with corporate memberships. You are able to play with the reports on the member activity. Um, and those are basically the 12 steps. And so we're going to take a look at each step a little bit more in depth, um, starting with the designing of your individual membership application. So I'm going to flip over to our little training site and see what uh, we can get going here. 
Oops. Alrighty. So this is our little training site here. Can y'all, do y'all see a website right now? Yes? Okay, okay good. Um, let me know if, if for whatever reason you're not seeing what I'm talking about because I've been known to ramble on and the go-to meeting is on a totally different screen. <laughs> so don't be afraid to stop me, alright? Okay, so this is where you go to design the membership application. Um, starting from the tendency console to take a look at the individual membership application you want to click on design membership app and that's going to take you to the options where you can search or add. Um, going to look at search to see what's up there. Um, alrighty. So we already have a membership app that's in place here. Um, you can add a new one or you can customize the one that already exists. So let's go ahead and add a new one for the sake of this training. You want to give your application a name. Um, you can put any notes in here. The notes are only going to be visible to the admin. Um, And then once you have added the new one, you can either click on View Templates or Build Your Own. Uh, we do have a couple, I think we have a couple basic membership application templates that you can use that gather very basic information like first name, last name, company, email, and things like that. But let's go ahead and click on Build Your Own. And this is where you get to specify the fields that you want to display. Um, you'll be able to specify what fields you want on there, what, are, what fields are going to be required. You can specify the member numbers if you have a specific, um, I guess, protocol for how the numbers are supposed to be if they start from a, a specific uh, number or they have a prefix or a suffix or anything like that. You can also specify whether or not uh, there's going to be any introduction text at the top of the membership application that you could use for, say for example, for um, instructions on how to fill out the membership application as well as confirmation text once they submit it, text that appears confirming that their application has gone through. And you'll also be able to set um, the expiration dates as well. So let's go back to our screen over here. So this is where you would specify the fields that you want. I'm going to go ahead and click all these guys. The fields of first name, last name, and email are always going to be uh, required. You cannot um, uncheck those guys. If you're setting up the membership application to work in conjunction with corporate memberships, the key thing to remember is next to corporate membership ID, you want to make sure you check the show box there. And then everything else uh, outside of that is really up to you. Um, on the third step, there's more options that you can select, uh, whether or not you want additional addresses to display, if you want folks to be able to join or add themselves to user groups if you want them to be able to add a directory listing when they're applying for membership, all that stuff. All of this is covered in more detail in our memberships training. On step four, you get to specify the expiration date for individual members. Any individual member that is bound to a corporate membership will share the same expiration date as the corporate member. So. If the corporate member is expired and the folks, the individuals are trying to come back into the site and renew themselves, they will not be able to renew themselves until the corporation has renewed themselves. Um, you are able to specify expiration date for individuals that are not associated with a corporate member. Um, and there are four different options with whether or not you want to have them expire um, 
annually on a specific day on the original join month or annually on a specific day of the renew month or annually on a specific day and month or a specific date in the year. You also get to specify what type of payment types you want to be able to accept for memberships. In most cases people are going to use credit cards so that they can pay online and as long as your site is hooked up with a merchant account you'll be able to process online payments. If you need to get your site hooked up to a merchant account, just um, let us know. You can either contact your project manager or support team member and we'll be able to uh, point you in the right direction of what needs to happen. You are able to specify how many days before the member uh, the membership expires is a member able to renew themselves. So we'll just put 30 days in there and how long after the membership has expired can a member continue to renew themselves so that's 30 days after and how long after expiration does a member still enjoy privileges um, that's going to be you can have that at any all these numbers don't need to match so the difference between how long after they expire can they renew versus how long after they expire do they have privileges <clears throat> They will continue to have privileges as long as their member ID remains in their user record, which is what Tendency looks for to verify membership. And so they could have privileges for seven days after expiration, but they could continue to re uh, be able to renew their membership up to 30 days. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense? I'm not getting any answers. Guys? <clears throat> Do you need me to explain that again? No, I got it. Okay, good. <coughs> Excuse me. Alrighty. You also have the option to send members um, renewal notices. And that is set up automatically, so the renewal notices go out in the background. You won't be able to customize those notices, and they just get sent automatically. Uh, we talked about being able to customize the member numbers, if there's a prefix or a postfix, as well as putting CMS pages, uh, introductory text, uh, confirmation text associated with the application as well. And you would have to create that CMS page and select it from the list and then it would display. So we're going to go ahead and confirm this application and we can preview it. And right now this is what it looks like. This is the admin view. Um, it shows all the fields that you're getting information from, the corporate membership ID, um, the membership types, as well as the payment methods and all of these payment methods are displaying because I'm looking at it as an admin. Um, uh, if a user or a person potential member was looking at it they wouldn't see all of this and so looking at it looks good the next thing is to activate it so let me go ahead and click the Before link. you go away when you go down to the bottom and you're adding the date of when it's going to expire why do we have so many past dates in there? What do you mean? Okay, down here where it says join date. Yeah. And you click on, uh, you know, the year. Uh-huh. Click on that, it brings up, you know, 1900. Right. Can you all not take that down to 2000 now or something? Well, we can't take it down to 2000, but we could make a recommendation to programming to maybe make it more recent. We do have clients that have members from the 80s and they do want to have a record of that on their membership application. Um, normally this, this, that particular section is an admin only section and when a person joins the dates are automatically populated so you don't necessarily need to go in there to edit it unless you're trying to change it after the fact. Um, well I get a lot of applications in the mail. Yeah. You know, members so I go in and add them. Gotcha. 
And so that's when I see all of that, and I just thought, you know, it, can you, is, can I change mine where it would just start from the 2000s instead of 1900s? That's definitely a great question, um, and I can I can relay that onto programming team. I don't have an answer. Okay. For you, another option you may consider is if you have a lot of these guys that are coming in through the mail, you maybe want to do a, a membership import where you could specify the dates in an Excel sheet and then you just do the import and they all get added at once. I don't know um, the frequency of which you're receiving the applications. Uh, you know, it varies. If I'm having a campaign, yeah. you know, I can get 10 a day or, you know, after the campaign's over, I might get two or three a day. Got so it. I'm it's not, I don't think it's enough for me to import them. Okay. Properly. Well, that's definitely a great question, and uh, and I will relay that on to the team and see what they say. And who is, who is that asking? Uh, Charlene. All right. Thank you, Charlene. I'm going to make a note. All righty. So we, we went back to the Activate screen, and we're going to turn on our new um, application. So now it's been activated. If I go over here, so I'm going back to our other same site, but on this, on Internet Explorer, I'm not logged in. So this is what um, the membership application looks like for a user versus what it looks like for the admin. Admin sees all of the um, payment types in the admin-only section, and the user just sees the fields to fill in, the membership types and the payment method and the little CAPTCHA thing. Any questions so far? No. Okay. So now we've added the individual uh, membership application. The next step is to add the corporate membership application. And going back to our training site where we're logged in as an admin. So go back to the tenancy console. You want to click on other tenancy modules and then click on corporate mem app. And this is where you get to set up the corporate membership application. The individual membership application is fairly customizable, but the corporate membership application is not very customizable at all. Um, we already have an existing membership application on the site and click on the pencil to edit, give it a name, you want to specify the authentication method for individuals who are joining under the corporate membership and there's two options you can have email or administrator approval the difference between email and administrator approval is if you set it to email, whenever a company joins, you will have to specify the approved or authorized email domains that are associated with that company. So say, for example, we have a corporate membership for Shipple, and we'll have to specify that the authorized domains are Shipple.com or Tendency.com, and anybody who has a Shipple.com or Tendency.com email address uh, will be able to join under that corporation. What will happen then is they'll first, it'll be a two-step process, they'll fill out the site user registration and uh, Tenancy will take a look at their email address and say, okay, they're trying to join under a corporate member, this is their email address, so they must be trying to associate themselves with this company, Shipple, because they have a Shipple.com. So they send an email to the Shipple.com address that they put in and say, you need to verify your email, click here to verify. So they do that, and then they get a secondary email that says, um, here's the link to the membership application for you to complete your application. And so they click on that link and they go to the membership application, and they're able to complete the process. 
for the other option, which is administrator approval. Um, if they're trying to join under the corporation, uh, they will they'll be able to go straight to the membership application. They'll be able to select the corporate member that they want to be associated with and then they'll pay and submit their application and their application will be pending admin approval. So an administrator on the site will have to go in and verify that they're legit and that they can um, join under that company and if everything is legit then they'll approve the application and then they'll their membership will become active so it's really up to you however you want to organize your individuals under the corporation um, which authentication method you choose if you do have chapters associated with your organization you can enter the chapters here and they can join um, under the corporation as part of the chapter you get to specify the payment types for the corporate memberships um, as well as the individuals so most common of course credit card um, you can have cash check wire transfer or send an invoice if you do um, select cash or check the memberships will be in pending status until an admin approves um, same thing with wire transfer same thing with send invoice so the only one that really will activate is the credit card payment because credit card payments are almost instantaneous you also have the option to display specific content from CMS pages at the top of section 1, section 2, and section 3 of the corporate membership application. We'll take a look at what that application looks like here in a second. And that's really it. The other, uh, the individual membership application had a lot more uh, features that you customize. The corporate membership application, not so much. So if we go over here, we click on add we'll be able to view the corporate membership application from the admin viewpoint the actual um, corporate membership application that a, a potential member will see will look slightly different I'm not able to demonstrate that um, through here but we can take a look at what the admin view is so it'll have all the same information including the company name um, if you had chapters you get to see the types and the rep for the because we've chosen email authentication they will need to add the uh, specific domains that are to be allowed to join under this company and then of course you have your uh, other information referral details and admin only stuff which only the admin will see. We do have some help files on the PowerPoint that explain a little bit more detail the authentication method, um, email versus admin approval. Any questions so far? So once you've set up the corporate membership app, the next step is to update the site setting for corporate memberships to be available. And let's take a look at where to do that. So go back to our site over here. So starting from the Tenancy Console, if you click on the link that says Site Settings, that'll take you to the Global Site Settings. Once you're in there, you want to click on More Modules and then click on Corporate Memberships. And that'll bring up the site settings for corporate memberships you want to scroll down and the one that you're looking for is memberships available and what this one does is it turns on the icon um, on the console so let's take a look so right now this is the little icon he's there if I turn this guy off and I refresh this guy Poof, he's gone. And he's not going to be there by default. So you will have to come in here and turn him on. So just change it from no to yes. Click change. And that gets updated. Bing, he's there. And we need him there because if he's not there, then we can't get to the module. 
The next thing you want to do is uh, update the site setting for default user type to custom. Let's go back to here we are. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be in users or in the global. Let's take a look. Oop. Oops. Nope. It might be a global setting. So let me go back to Ian. Not finding our friend here. Nope. Nope, not there. Hold on. I'm going to phone a friend. Actually, I'm going to go look in the health files. Users module setting registration user type to custom. Okay. So let me go look there again. Was user type. Mm, still not finding it. Nope. Well, I'm going to have to look that up and give you guys an update when I send out the email. So. I know that we made some recent changes updating our site variables to site settings and it may be in a place that I'm just not seeing it. Actually, I'll look in one other place. Just for grins. Maybe it's in here. Nope, not in here either. Okay. Find that that out and let you guys know. Uh, the next site setting that you want to update is the user self add format and what that's going to do is it's going to change the login page to give you the extra options for folks to be able to register as a site user or join as an individual um, versus join as an individual under the organization or sign up your organization. So let's take a look at where we can go to change that. So you want to look at the site settings in the user module and the site setting is called self add for format. So going back to this guy, click on more modules and click on users. And it said it was self add format. And so right now by default it's going to it's most likely going to say short by default. This help file gives you the options on what you can change it to and what we want to change it to is corporate membership membership and we have other options which you can look at through the help file before I do that um, I'm, before I change it I'm going to show you what um, if I go if I go to IE where I'm not logged in and I go to the login page. Right now it looks like this. This is what the short looks like. If I change it to this, it should update the page over here to display all of these options. Um, because I've chosen the authentication method of email, uh, I have 
two separate options, join under your organization versus, as well as join as an individual. If I had chosen the authentication method for the corporate membership application as administrator approval, these two would be combined because you would be able to use the one application um, and you would only have three options instead of four. So now that you've updated that, um, oops, go back. Uh, site setting. The next thing that you want to... Question so far? Good. The next thing that you want to do is set up your individual membership types um, and this is where you go specify the pricing for the individuals and then you're going to hook them up with their corporate member type as well once the corporate membership types have been uh, created. We can have as many membership types as needed um, and you want to make sure that you check the box to associate the membership type with the corporate members or else it'll just be a mem an individual membership type. So let's take a look at where we go to do that. So we're done with site settings for now. We can go back to the tenancy console. And in order to set up the individual membership types, you want to go to the membership module. So you click on memberships. And then you can either click on membership types on the list over here or types um, in the text underneath the tabs. You'll go to the same place. You can search membership types to view all the existing membership types that are available on the website. Right now in our little training site, we have two. We can add a new one. Um, you want to give the membership type a name. And you can specify a price. And the price that you specify here will be the price that the individual under the organization will have to pay in order to join as a member under that organization. It's up to you uh, whether or not you want to specify a price or have it free. If the, if the companies join, then individuals underneath can join for free or you can charge. So I'm going to say this one's going to be $5. You can add a description. Um, and this, I th this um, whatever description you put here I believe will appear next to the membership type um, and we can take a look at that Oops. you want to make sure that the allow user option remains checked so that um, person coming to the site can choose this option and if this is going to be bound to corporate memberships you want to make sure that this box is checked so that's what that instruction means uh, be sure to check the box to oops spelling to associate the membership type with corporate members hit submit and we have another uh, membership type that was already listed this guy, individual under corporation, he's zero. Um, we're going to charge five dollars for this guy. And then this other membership type is just the plain old individual membership type. He's not associated with a corporate member, so if somebody comes to the site to join as an individual member, he'll have to pay ten dollars on this particular site. The other things that you need to, to be aware of is you want to be you want to bind the individual membership type to the corporate membership type. And you can also set up a threshold. And what the threshold does is if you have a company that joins for a hundred dollars, you can specify that the first three members get to join for zero dollars and then anybody beyond the first three has to pay ten dollars or something like that. If you don't bind the individual membership type to a corporate membership, <coughs> excuse me, they will just be able to join as a member not associated with the company. And we get to get into this binding whenever we create the corporate membership type. So let's take a look at that. 
I'm gonna leave this page open because we're gonna come back to it and then I'm gonna open this tab uh, in a new window or a new tab um, if I was coming back to the site and I needed to get to the corporate membership types I can start from the tenancy console click on corporate memberships and then click on corporate membership types either up here or over here take me to the same place click on search to see what's already listed so we have one corporate membership type right now click the pencil to edit it oops not that much alright hundred dollars then um, give the membership type a name you want to give the price um, you can add a description if you need to and then here's where you bind the individual membership type to the corporate membership type so we just added the individual under corporation type A and I'm calling this guy corporate membership type A if I wanted to add a threshold I could check this box and specify say the first five people get in for zero and then uh, after the five people have been met then everybody else gets in at the price that is specified here does that make sense y'all I'm going to take that as a yes. yes. Okay, good. Um, most folks don't use the threshold, so I'm just going to leave that as default. And then, of course, status, status detail. Um, you want to leave it as active. You could have membership types in place, but hide them until you're ready to use, like you could have them on standby. And if you wanted to do that, you could change the status detail to admin hold. I'm um, going to go ahead and submit and search um, okay so we choose a corporate membership types be sure to bind your corporate membership type to the corresponding individual membership type we did that and now memberships have been set up any questions so far on that um, the first seven steps five more steps to go Woo Alrighty. Can you name those, I mean, say you have three corporations that have joined, mm -hmm. um, can you put a, when they go online to register, can they click on like, say it was a Shell or an Exxon or mm -hmm. one of those companies, can they, can they click on, yeah, I'm with Shell and that would populate? If the company, if they're trying to join Shell for the very first time, Mm -hmm. it's not going to populate. They're going to have to fill in all that information. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. Well, good question so far, folks. Um, so the next step, now that you have the application in place for the individuals and the corporate membership, settings are in place, and then you have created your membership types, everything's cool. The next thing that you want to do is if you have individual members, um, already that you can add to the database you can do a, a member import um, some of our clients when they're in development process they have a members already that they need to get added and they can import them and even if the individuals are to be associated with the corporation you can still go ahead and import them there are some additional steps that the SHIPA programming team has to do after that but you can get started with the initial import. We do have a help file that talks through the whole process of how to prepare the, the data for import and how to import it. And you want to make sure that when you're preparing the import file that you specify the correct individual membership type um, and the join date and the expiration date for the members. So Because if you don't specify the join date or the expiration date, um, tenancy will automatically add the date that you import the members as the join date and the expiration date will be one year from the date that you imported so it it is important to specify that um, and then once you prepare the file go ahead and import it we have a super duper helpful on how to do this and of course we're available to assist um, via phone or email support at triple.com or you can call us and dial extension 411 uh, for the support team. The next step is once you've got the people in, you want to get the companies in. 
Unfortunately, we don't have an import process for the companies yet. Um, that part of the module hasn't been built out. But what we can do is if you give us uh, a CSV file or an Excel file of the company data, uh, namely company name, address, uh, company contact, which we can specify to be the dues rep, we can get the programming team to add them directly to the database. And your project manager can help you with this if you need assistance. Uh, if you're already live, you can check in with the support team. And then once the companies are in there, we have to bind or connect the individual members to their corporate member entity. Um, again, there isn't a way for you as an admin to do that particular step. You'll have to give us a, um, a CSV or an Excel file and programming can do it directly in the database and both of these two steps are billable. Everything up until this point you guys can do on your own um, and step 10 and step 11 probably take about two to three hours for programming to do um, if they need to do it and you would only be billed for the time that it took um, and and until we get that portion of the module built out, um, unfortunately, you're going to have to come through us to get that part taken care of. You're not going to need this, though, if you have companies that are joining through the website. So they come to the website and they join. They get added to the database. And they have people come after them and join. They get added to the database. If they're joining through the website, it's already taken care of. It's only if you're importing people or trying to get people um, into the database in bulk that you'll have to go through these extra, extra two steps. And so once everybody's in, um, the last thing that you get to do is to look at all the member reports. Um, we didn't used to have any member reports for corporate membership module, but uh, programming updated the reports um, and have been updating them over the past six months. And we have a whole bunch of reports now, which we never had before, which is very exciting. If you want to look at the reports, you can go to the corporate membership module and then click on the link for reports right here. Or there's another link for reports right here. And there's a whole bunch of reports that we never had before. Uh, new corporate memberships, renewed corporate memberships, expired corporate memberships. Um, members that are coming up for renewal, number of corporate memberships, and that's the number of corporate member companies, number of corporate membership members, number of individuals under a corporation, and then you can also export your corporate members, um, and you'll ex the export format will be in an Excel format. This being the training site, I, we're not going to have um, any, any um, records to display, but once you get into the report, you can look uh, for the last month, last three months, last year, and you can also sort by these columns. Renewed. It's fairly similar. It'll show you a list of companies that have renewed. Um, and we're going to get into the renewal process next as well, so we can talk a little bit in detail about that. Folks that are expired. Um, Unfortunately, I don't have any data to show you guys. And folks that are coming up for renewal. So let's talk a little bit about renewals on the, um, for, the, for the individuals as well as corporate memberships. We talked briefly earlier about the renewal notices. Um, renewal notices for the corporate members are specified, are sent out automatically to the dues reps. I'm going to go to, oops, go back. I'm going to go to one of our other um, training sites, which has some data in there. So we do have some corporate members in this particular training site. Um, and I got here by going to from tenancy, clicking on corporate memberships, and then clicking on search. Or this guy, same place. 
And because I'm an admin, I see all of the records. I can search by company name. Um, I can see who's active. If there's anybody that's expired, <coughs> excuse me, or a company that's in the pro in the process of renewing. If I click on the company name, it's going to give me a little bit more detailed information, um, including their address, their membership details, their type, um, when their expiration date is, a link to their invoice, and who their dues reps, member reps, and alternate reps are. This guy doesn't have any. Let's see if I can add. Alrighty, so the renewal reminders for the corporate memberships will automatically go out to whomever's listed in the dues rep spot. Um, and if you go, if you start at the corporate membership module, there's a notice up here that says the corporate membership renewal reminder sends seven days before the expiration date. You can change the frequency or you can turn it off and these links go directly to site settings. So renewal reminders, it tells you whether or not um, the re reminders go out at all. And then the reminder days, this is how far in advance of the expiration do the reminders go out. So you get to specify that. Oops, where am I now? Here I am. The notices will include a link directly to the members renewal page. So say for example, um, you're the dues rep, you log into the site, you'll search, you'll be taken to this page, and if your member, corporate member is in a renewal state, there'll be a, a link, a yellow link that says renew. Um, you won't see as a as a dues rep, you won't see the extra information like the join date or expiration date or member type. You'll just see the address, phone number, information. This is the admin view once again. And so as an as the dues rep, you'll be able to begin the process. You can stop the process halfway and come back to it later and then you'll be in in progress. We can go through this guy. Um, the first step is verifying the company and the type. Then you hit next. If and then you get to choose what individual members you can renew. So you can along with renewing the company, you'll be able to renew the individuals underneath the company as well. So if this particular membership had individual members underneath it, they would be listed by name you would be able to and there would be check boxes by by each name as well as a, an option to select all and you can choose whether or not you want to renew all of the individual members under there or just uh, a sprinkling of them then you would hit next and it would list um, the corporate membership price the number of I'm sorry the type the price, the number of individuals, and how much each individual was and what the total would be. So um, then you would have the payment option. This being the admin view has all the different options. If you were just the dues rep, you would have the link to connect to the credit card payment and uh, make your payment online. And you'll also be able to specify whether you generate a single invoice for the company renewal as well as all the individuals beneath the company or a separate in invoice for each uh, one for the company and a separate invoice for each individual and um, if you chose the combined invoice then the invoice would list the company name as well as each name of the member that was renewed and then you would hit submit and you would complete your payment and then you would be uh, you would be done there is another help file there are actually two help files that uh, walk you through the process of renewing 
a corporate membership as an admin and renewing a corporate membership as a dues rep. So for the dues rep, you'll see the little yellow renew. Um, and then you'll go through the process. If you had members, you can check or you can check all. A little payment screen. And then once you've completed the payment, your membership will be renewed but still in pending status because the admin on the site will need to approve it. So the admin on the site gets the notice that so-and-so has renewed the membership and click here to renew. Once they renew it, <clears throat> you as the dues rep will get a notification that your uh, renewal has been approved. And this is the notification that says your renewal has been approved and then your corporate membership renewal as well as the renewals for the individuals if you if you did that at the time will be renewed and that and then you'll be done for the admin they'll see the renew link as well they'll go through the process they'll make the payment and they don't uh, their renewal does not result in a pending renewal as soon as the admin completes the payment, um, the membership is active. Questions so far? No, I'm good. Okay. So we talked about renewing as an admin, renewing as a dues rep. Individuals under the corporation cannot renew their membership until their corporate membership has been renewed. If we take a look at this guy, and see, I'm not sure if we have any members that meet that criteria on this guy. Mm. No. We do have a bunch of expired members, but none of these guys are expired corporate members. If they were an expired um, corporate member, this guy says you're currently not within the renewal period, you can't renew. If they were a corporate individual under a corporation that was expired, they would have a different type of message that says you're not able to renew until your corporation has renewed. Please contact your dues rep to renew it. Um, and the reason why that's in place is we don't want the individuals renewing without the corporation renewing because things get out of whack when that happens. So the corporation has to renew before the individuals can renew themselves. And like we saw earlier, the company could renew the individuals at the time of renewing the corporate membership, or they can just go ahead and renew the company, and then um, the individuals can come back later to the site and renew themselves if they need to. All right. Now what questions? I do have a question. Um, We're very close to the end. Yes, ma'am. Can you go back to the um, the the application or the renewal application? What is what the person that's renewing would see, not the admin? The for the dues rep. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, if they're renewing the corporate membership. Yeah. So they would log into the site, and then they would click on the icon to get to the corporate memberships module, and then they would uh, do a search for their particular company. They, if it was in a renewal state, they would have, they would see the little renew link. They would click the renew link, mm -hmm. and then they would start the process. Um, it would show the company name and the different membership types. If we, I mean, just from our experience, we have uh, people have a lot of trouble renewing online. Okay. Um, like they'll get that email that sends them a link, mm -hmm. get a link, and they just. They, we just seem to end up doing it most of the time because they have so much trouble. Yeah. Um, so I was just wondering if there's anything in the process as far as like programming to kind of make that a little bit more user friendly. Oh, we definitely welcome any any sort of feedback on that. So, um, yeah, please. I would please. say at like 50 percent of the time people can't renew it online themselves, so they end up calling us or emailing yeah. us we have to go and it's just it just takes forever to you know it's taking away a lot of our time definitely completing all those if you can send us an email um, to support 
explaining like the kind of troubles that they're running into, we can mm -hmm. definitely relay that feedback because we're we're definitely interested in hearing on how we can improve the software and the usability experience for the people who are actually using it. So uh -huh. please, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's been we've had you know suggestions in the past, but we were kind of told that it couldn't be changed because not enough. Um, there weren't enough companies that wanted to change it, so it was going to cost too much or something. Okay. Well, like I, said, I, like I said, we're still interested in hearing what the feedback is, and if it's, mm -hmm. uh, if, if it's a change request that programming feels is a global change that they do want to implement, but they would require funding, they still add it to their queue uh, to work on as time permits. Mm -hmm. um, so it may it may well be done. Um, it just may take a while. And they're also working on uh, upgrading a huge upgrade to the entire Tendency platform. And so the new version of Tendency may well have this um, functionality in place mm -hmm. as well. So it can um, happen. And when is that going to be rolled out? We don't have a timeline uh, in place just yet. They have just started talking about it, um, so I'm very hesitant to give a timeline, but they're they're doing okay. the research now and, and gathering, and we'll be making announcements shortly, either via the blog or via newsletter as far as the progress on that. Okay. What okay. other questions? Yeah? No? Oh, well, let's, let's take a look at the upcoming um, training that we have coming up. Today we had the webinar for corporate memberships. We do have um, some in-house training next month as well as a webinar for content management, um, which it sounds like both of you guys have had your tenancy site for a while, so probably not necessarily needing the content management webinar. We will be adding new items to the calendar shortly, um, so do check back. As far as the training for today, let's ha take a little recap. Um, we talked about the difference between site users and site members, difference between members and corporate members, and we went through the 12-step process on how to get started with corporate memberships. And we also took a look at um, how to handle imports we looked at renewals and what the renewal process is like for the admin of, on the site versus the process for the dues rep. And um, we took a brief gander into the reports available for corporate memberships. And really that is it for the training today. I am happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, we do have help files online on the corporate memberships. And if you need more help, you can contact the support team. Um, either at support at .com or you can call the main number and ask for or dial extension 411 and ask for support team. And we have eight um, awesome people on the support team that are listed there. Um, and really that's it guys. Do you have any other questions for me to, today? No, we appreciate it. I appreciate you sticking with me. Um, corporate memberships is not the most exciting module, um, <laughs> but I will be sending out an email with a link to the PowerPoint, and I have the one question from Charlene about the changing the dates in the drop-down, and I'm going to find that uh, missing site setting that we couldn't locate earlier, and I'll have that update in the email. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time this afternoon, guys. Once again, my name is Carrie, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can email support at shipple.com. I do get that email. Or you can call in to the main number, ask for me, or dial 411 for the support extension. Great. Thank you much. You guys have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye. Bye.